The biggest prediction in the intelligent design model is that of irreducible complexity. Many design advocates will say, quote, nothing works unless everything works, unquote. In other words, let's say we're comparing, say, fish and amphibians. A design advocate might argue that in order to be adapted for an aquatic lifestyle, this is so complex with gills and muscle patterns and eyesight for underwater, etc., that uh, animals would be either adapted for life in aquatic environments or have a completely different set of adaptations for life on land because life on land would be uh, an example of a very complex set of adaptations which would be required. There would be limb bones, limb muscles, innervation for these, uh, eyesight and hearing on land are different than in the water, breathing on land is different in the water, etc. So a design advocate would probably argue that we would not see intermediate forms, that fish would not uh, gradually develop the adaptations for uh, terrestrial life. And terrestrial fossils, say amphibians, would not have aquatic uh, vestiges of fish ancestors, that they would be completely adapted to terrestrial life. So in other words, there would be nothing in between a fully aquatic fish and a fully terrestrial amphibian, that the adaptations for terrestrial life would be an example of an irreducibly complex set of adaptations. It would be easy to test this design model if the fossil record were complete enough. One would not expect to see any intermediates between an aquatic condition and a terrestrial condition. One would certainly not dis expect to see fish which are gradually becoming amphibian-like. The fossil record, however, reveals something different. The fossil record indicates that in the Devonian period, there was a group of Sarcopterygian fish which gradually uh, developed lungs. They developed the same bones in their fins which amphibians would use uh, in their limb bones on land and gla uh, gradually modify their skull so that the bones and the sense organs were much more similar uh, to amphibians than to other fish. In the same way, the earliest amphibians are certainly not frogs or salamanders or anything alive today, but instead they are very primitive forms. Some early forms couldn't even support the weight of their body on land. They still possessed internal gills. They uh, still possessed uh, primitive uh, aspects of their uh, limbs and skull, which are not seen in any amphibians today, but are similar to the traits possessed by those Sarcopterygian fish. And so in the Devonian period, there are both transitional Sarcopterygian fish, which have developed some but not all of the adaptations for land, and also some transitional fossils of the early amphibians, which possess uh, traits not found in any modern amphibians, but which are typical of their Sarcopterygian fish ancestors.